y'all asked for it, here it is. We back in her, we're back in the 379 this week. First week out, we've been all day swapping stuff out and uh, trying to get her tag swapped over. And I really needed to load. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know this load was supposed to load and deliver the same day until uh, about I don't know 6:30 last night. So uh, I don't know. It's uh, one of those deals. I ain't never had to load a load and deliver it on Monday same day loaded delivered the same day but uh, I just one of them deals it, it couldn't happen today so anyway we're free to go load load us some bean meal and go down to Louisiana alright guys we're sitting here next to line been in line over here at the soybean mill for four and a half lovely hours and kind of the standard procedure here is you know I mean you just go in line pull around over here and then you circle around uh you know kind of like u-turn olympics except it's just one u-turn it's tight at least you ain't loaded and uh when you get up here to the door you go in there and check in uh tell them you're next and give them a number i go in there and give them my number and i look at the number and i'm like this number don't they don't look good and i'm like uh, anyway i i thought well that okay so i give him that number and he says hey this is uh this is for holes. Okay, hey, hang on a second here. All right, we're up in here loading. Man, I thought that was gonna be bad. We ended up getting uh, getting wires crossed on my rate confirmation. So anyway, I made a quick phone call. Turns out I had the right information. Uh, I had the right information. It was just uh, wasn't. I had the right information text to me last night, and uh, anyway, got it straightened out. Uh, it just had the wrong thing on my rate confirmation. So anyway, I almost had a conniption fit there for a second. So anyway, that's what uh, that's what we're going. So we're loading bean mail here. He's fixing to get started here in just a second, and. Uh, yeah, yeah. I feel better, man. I, I just about to. When you sit here in line for a load that takes less time to deliver than it does to load, um, yeah, it's kind of. I don't know. I ain't digging it, but you know, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. And today we're just doing what we got to do. It ain't what I like, ain't what I want to do, but you know. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's it's what I need to do. So I need to keep working because my wife is uh, she's in nurse nurse practitioner school. She's fixing up. She's fixing to uh, graduate in a couple months, and uh, she had a job at uh, she's the director at a department in a hospital and uh she went part-time and then she decided she'd just quit so i've got to go every week now so for the next two months uh i gotta go every week and for the past two months i've had to go every week so it's uh man after you get kind of you're tired because you got everything going on you know i've just got everything else going on it's like uh been trying to work on this truck been trying to work on my other truck uh keep it you know keep it going it every week i mean when you come in you got to do something every week if you don't do something every week uh you ain't looking at your truck enough so anyway that being said we've been working on saturdays and been working on the house on sundays uh we've got uh we got some pipes busted in uh probably in our slab i think and had a pipe uh, bust in our wall and flooded the kitchen, laundry room, and then uh, our washer drain is, pretty sure the pipe is gone on it, uh, busted up under the slab. So, uh, yeah, we've got big things going on at home too. And I'm just, uh, last, last weekend, I 
worked on a truck all day and then come home and basically disassembled my kitchen Saturday night. So um, Sunday I woke up, I, I was I was zoned. So uh, I just took it easy. I didn't do nothing on Sunday. So all right, here we are. We're loading. All right, we're loading, waiting on that green light. They loading us under this little shed here. Or, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm so flustered I can't even talk. Up under this little canopy deal, can't kind of keep the dust down a little bit. But I didn't even tell him what I wanted in the trailer. He's probably just going to load it to eighty thousand, and I'm going to be over on axles and everything else. So, no big deal. We'll just uh, we'll just ride on. That's what we'll do. Too late now. So we're loading, and uh, I don't know. It's just I don't know. Sitting here four and a half hours, man. It makes me think about some life decisions. I've thought about this. This morning, I could have sold all this junk and just said the heck with it. And I just I don't know. When you think about all the time you spend in this thing, or in one of, you know, you got a truck, and you spend all week in it, and you work on it all weekend, and, uh, you know, with the kind of money you make, I just, I don't know. Sometimes I think it, it's it's not worth it. I think it's just, you work yourself to death, uh, you know, and I mean, like, the money ain't there right now you know a couple years ago the money was there it was it was good for a while but i don't know i mean it just it slowed down some and it's uh i'm not uh i'm not saying that i i'm just like totally gonna quit trucking but i tell you i was tired enough this morning when i had and knowing that i had to go swap everything out of this truck and get everything ready to go and then come over here knowing that i was probably gonna have to sit here a while and then had to go down here tonight and i just like you know i was busy all weekend and didn't spend a lot of quality time with my family and i'll tell you it just somebody walked up with the right amount of money today if they pulled up the shop wanted both these trucks and a the trailer they would have they probably could have had them on like, or two trucks and a trailer because i could have done it today but uh, I don't know. I'll get out here on the road maybe and uh, start feeling good and change my mind. But yeah, it's tough. It's tough when you got a family and I, man, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder what keeps people doing this between the, the bull crap and the idiot drivers and the a-hole people you have to deal with. In the hopper bottom, you don't find that very much. Uh, last week, I kind of almost everybody I ran into seemed like an a-hole about everywhere I went, but uh, it wasn't terrible. So it wasn't like you went to a uh, went to a grocery warehouse where everybody's an asshole there. <laughs> everybody. So, alright, we got the green light. We're loaded. We're going on. You gonna go get our paperwork down the magic tube and be done. All right, jumped out and got our paperwork out of that little magic tube. And, uh, yeah, they loaded us. <laughs> All right. Uh, jump in the old green machine here. Check the paperwork. Make sure it is going to the right place, and it is. I am so happy about that. I always like to check my paperwork at this place because... Uh, you know, you really don't, you don't sign for it. Well, you don't sign for it. They send it down that little chute and uh, you don't sign for it. But I mean, they got a spot for you to sign the bills like later on, but yeah. Anyway, so now that we've sat here too long to go home and will not fit in my briefcase. I'm going to clean my briefcase out. Alright, so now we're an hour uh, what, an hour and 15 minutes from the house. 
and it is uh, I don't know maybe eight time is eight twenty eight so it'd be like nine forty five be at bedtime when I get home so I'm just not gonna go home because I don't want to disrupt my family's uh bedtime routine and uh, it's one of the things what I like about what I do is I get to go home on Monday nights for a little bit and eat supper but and I probably could if I'd got up this morning and come over here and got loaded but uh, Saturday just wasn't it wasn't long enough it just wasn't long enough so we had to finish up everything that we were doing Saturday uh, today morning so and it just uh, you just have those man you're just gonna have those I hate it because like I said I hadn't spent any time quality time with my with my kids much so anyway got that dust all over that brand new paint job breaking her in right let's go riding towards uh let's go to the loves and go take a shower I guess all right y'all here we are at the old U-turn Olympics again. We're gonna go in here and this is our first U-turn right here. All right, here's U-turn number one. All righty, here's U-turn number two. dumpster over here you gotta miss every time usually there's some maintenance guy putting some crap in there so I'm just glad there ain't a guy with a fort lift out here doing a bunch of junk so alright there you turn number two we're gonna pull up on the scale here and see about getting, uh, getting weighed in All right, I almost don't know whether to call this one a U-turn or not, because, like, you come off the scales and make a right, you know, and you go, you know, what, probably, I don't know, 100 feet here, and then you make another 90-degree turn, so, I, you know, I don't know if you call that a U-turn or not. All right, so we're definitely going to call this one a U-turn, because, well, there ain't no other way of putting it. I'm just glad it's not as muddy as it is uh, it's muddy back over there but I'm gonna try and get as close to the edge here and turn right before this mud hole and try and miss these dang trailers but it don't matter how it don't really matter how hard you try to not make this a hard turn it's it's a hard turn to, the guy that designed this mill he must have had a brother that that makes suspension bushings for trucks and trailers. Because you don't do nothing but U-turns every time you come in here, so. All right, we're gonna pull up on the pit. Ah, he's got the pit cover. Uh, the pit cover's over the pit, so I'm just gonna wait on him. come get this pit cover right here. I'm just gonna stop short right here and uh, and wait on him. Turn, call this a U-turn coming out of this pit right here. Cause I, I'm just gonna call it a U-turn because it's a hard turn coming out of there, and then you got to make it's I don't know. 
maybe it's not so bad. This next turn ain't that bad, I don't think. Yeah, I guess that one ain't that one ain't a ain't a bad turn. It's about like coming out of the scale. The scale was kind of it wasn't a hard turn, but it wasn't an easy turn. But I'm still gonna call it a U-turn. It's still a U-turn. So we're gonna go down here and do a U-turn. Gotta figure out what this guy's fixing to do, what door he's going in. As to if I'm gonna go to the right and make a turn U-turn or the left and make a U-turn, so. I guess he's fixing to get out and open his doors and all that jazz. Well, this guy had it, he had it lined out. I thought, man, he, he, he had it lined up. I thought he was going in there pretty good, but it's about, I don't know. I mean, he had it straight in there the first lick and I don't know what, it may be tight over there. He's just going back and forth, but I don't know. This ain't as bad as some others. Sometimes I watch some of these guys back up and and uh, and that that music they played during on Benny Hill when they were doing all those stupid chase scenes and everything and dumb stuff. I mean, like that's the kind of stuff that plays through my head when I see some of these guys. But I guess he's about got it lined out here. That must be a really tight dock there. All right, I forgot to even film that last. All right, forgot to film that last U-turn, but. It's the same U-turns we made coming in here, so. All right, get this feed truck out of our way, and I'm gonna make a phone call, see if my mobile washout guy can get to me today. He had a roof to do this morning, so. He might be done with it by now. I'm gonna call him and check him out. All right, so this is one of the worst things about coming to a feed mill, where they load trucks, where you own the scale that everybody weighs in and out of. I've been sitting here for a freaking hour, and I'm, I'm, I'm pressed for time today. I ain't got time for this mess. And uh, that they have been, this truck was behind me when I went to go dump. And so I went back there to dump and I've been sitting here for almost an hour. And we're still not done loading this load of feed in this truck. So I, I don't know what's going on here. This is, I, I hate coming to this place. I swear I hate coming to this place. Number one, I don't make a lot of money coming to this place. It's just, it's just a load to get me where I need to go. And that's, uh, oh, here we go. Oh, the guy waved at me. He knows I'm pissed. He knows I got to be pissed. He, and I know he can't help it. So, uh, you're at the mercy of everything else. But he just come out with some paperwork. So I'm guessing he's done. So, I am glad. Lord, I'm glad. I got to get going. Still got to get a washout. Oh, uh, my mobile guy can't do it today. So, I'm going to have to, uh, go way down BFE and get washed out today and uh, you know I'm 11 o'clock 12 o'clock I'm gonna be 1 o'clock 1 o'clock getting there at least cause I'm uh, it's 9.30 now it's an hour and a half an hour and a half down to the washout and provided he can get right on me you know I leave there at 10 I'm an hour from where I got to be so that's 11 wait no wait no, I'll be 11. Be 11 getting down there. And then uh, 11.30, time he gets me washed out. And then an hour or so, uh, be 12.30, 1 o'clock. So <sighs> it is what it is. This ain't always pretty and it ain't always fun. But we fix to go scale out now, boys. <laughs> All right. We just let the hood down on this piece of shit. Once again. Yeah, nice. That was a cop right there. Once again, we're the side of the road here. People driving by 90 flipping mile an hour. And we run out of fuel on one side. For some reason or another, my passenger side tank was turned on and my driver's side was turned off. So, anyway. That being said, we've been on the side of the road for about... I don't know, 15, about 15 minutes, about 15 minutes. I, it just, man, it, the sun gun just went dead, like straight up dead. And I'm like, man, what the hell? And I was like, it's got to be something, something with some fuel. And I was right. So anyway, after about getting annihilated by 1,500 people, soccer moms and 
just assholes not paying attention and FedEx and UPS almost got I almost got whacked by a freaking FedEx truck on there. I was I had a fuel full tank on the driver's side so I was getting some fuel out of it. Just dipping it. And as I'm dipping it, this FedEx guy comes by and I'm like literally fixed to grab the fuel filter because I had it stuck between the spring and the tire and it was just kind of resting there. So I had it stuck in between there and I had my little bottle. I've got a little 20 ounce bottle I made with a zip, big zip tie on it and I just put it down in there. So I had put that on my deck plate and I was turning around to go get this fuel filter and this dude the FedEx comes by and he's literally like hadn't moved over and there's nobody in the left lane beside him and he comes by me literally just like inches inches you know I'm like man come on so anyway I just about to call the state police and tell them they don't like send somebody out there to uh, put some blue lights behind me but I just start throwing stuff at people I, I, I well I ain't so but if you're driving down I-49 today and uh, you get home and the side of your car is real shiny, you think that. Just got 126 in here. Got the old green truck. We're in her today. She's looking pretty good. Uh, I guess she's looking good. I don't know. It ain't polished out, so I'm not really that happy with it. So, but we. Uh, Man, we had a bad day yesterday. We run out of fuel on one side. I don't know why my driver's side tank is gone. Run out of fuel. And as I'm putting fuel in my fuel filters, I get one on the frame done. I'm doing the one on the uh, doing the one on the on the engine. And I've got it. Uh, hang on a second. I'll show you what I got. Here's what I did. I had it stuck right there between this tire and this frame, or that spring. I had it stuck there, right? And it was just propped up. You know, it, it was not like about to fall over propped up. It was propped up pretty good, but as I was, I uh, had my little cup with my little zip tie on it, dipping the fuel, and uh, as I was reaching around to go get that, go get that filter, this FedEx truck comes by like 75 freaking mile an hour and blows the filter over. Lo and behold me, I don't realize it because I'm just trying to get off the road because people, uh, I don't know, people just drive like assholes. I'm, I'm just going to put it to you like that. You know, the closer you get to I-10, the more people drive like assholes. So uh, that being said, I was about seven or eight miles from I-10 when this happened. Uh, matter, matter of fact, I think uh, 13 miles from I-10 on 49. So 75 mile an hour speed limit there and like people aren't getting over. So I'm just, I'm in a hurry to get off the road because I don't, I don't want to be a statistic. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get home with my family. And uh, anyway, there's a, there's a rubber, round rubber gasket that goes on the edge of this filter. <laughs> 
and uh, it fell off. And lo and behold, to me, I did not notice it. And I stuck a fuel filter back on. So I haul ass down to the washout. I turn my truck off when I get to the washout. And uh, anyway, I don't pay no attention. You know, I'm just trying to get washed out, trying to hurry up so I can get loaded. So I go over to load, and uh, I'm loading on concrete there. And I notice there's some dripping. I'm like, what is that? I said, that's uh, my air conditioner don't work good enough for it to drip right now. So uh, surely not. And so I pulled the hood over and it was just dripping a little bit of fuel and I look and it's coming off that fuel. I was like, well, I got the fuel filter tight, didn't I? So I grab my pliers, my filter pliers and proceed to uh, tighten it a little bit more. And when I did, it made it worse. And I'm like, oh my God. So I shut the truck off. I was gonna try and get the filter off. And uh, I carry, or I thought I carried, a number eight union where I can take this uh, bypass this filter on the uh, on the frame here. Uh, you just take the lines off and connect them with a number eight union. And I could not find that number eight union to save my life, but I also couldn't get that filter off to save my life. And uh, I, I found a tool that I'm gonna buy uh, and put stick in here. Uh, I've got a little pair pair of them. Like they used to keep in my pocket until like they just got annoying. But the uh, Clinex or whatever uh, channel locks, those are the bomb diggly. I took, they had some where I was loading it, and I went out there and like shh, grabbed that filter, and I mean, it was tight. I couldn't, I got good filter pliers, and I, I couldn't, with everything in me, I couldn't squeeze and make it, make it loosen up. I took them Clinex on there, and <laughs> right off. So, uh, I got it loosened up, and tightened it up just enough where it wasn't spraying just absolutely everywhere and drove 13 miles, got a new fuel filter, stuck it on there, come on home. So uh, that's kind of how my day went yesterday. It was, it was very stressful. And uh, with this autoimmune thing I got going on right now, I don't need any stress. So yeah, yeah. I don't know if I've told y'all about this autoimmune deal, but I've got like, my body is just like broke out in rashes. And it's painful, itchy and everything else. So. Uh, that's been going on, been going on like slowly the last couple months. Uh, matter of fact, I noticed it like uh, maybe the week before I got back in this green truck. So, I mean, that was uh, end of September, 1st of October, and it just, you know, very little, and then it's just slowly gotten worse, and it just like full blown went insane about three weeks ago. I got steroid shot, did a round of steroids, and that almost cleared it up, but it didn't clear it up. So, that being said, uh, that's just kind of part of the things that are going on, not counting my house right now. So, I'm going to shut up and uh, finish my logbook, get in the truck here and get going here because we are uh, we need to get going. Uh, enjoy the sunrise when we come through South Arkansas.
New Paris, Ohio. And I just got through taking a shower. And that fuel tank is doing a number again. So, here's what happened with the fuel tank today once again. Probably my fault, but we stopped and got fuel at uh, our normal place that we stopped, Mount Vernon, Illinois. I got fuel and I wasn't going to fill that fuel tank up, but just like maybe halfway. And uh, anyway, I messed around and uh, let it fill up. So we uh, instantly started pouring fuel out of that crack spot because, you know, the crack spot's on the backside of that fuel tank where the bracket uh, that bolts to the frame. I I'm sure some rock or something finds its way in there somehow or another. But it's rubbed right there, so uh, God, I hope I can get home this weekend and take that thing off and get it fixed because it is a royal pain in my, you know what. So that being said, uh, we have no load coming home yet. So uh, hopefully tomorrow will be Thursday. Hopefully we can uh, we can get a load. Hopefully my my dude will pull a rabbit out of his hat. That's what we're hoping for anyway. So. Uh, we still got a little ways to go and uh, got plenty of time to get there. I don't really have to be there early in the morning, so I'm not going to get up at the butt crack of dawn and unload this. So let's uh, let's get our log book and uh, we're going to cruise around the parking lot one time before we leave out of here. Look at the cool trucks. Here this morning and slept in because there's no load in this place. They open up at six o'clock Eastern time, and my guy don't get to work till eight o'clock Central time. So uh, you know it's kind of no no need getting up real early this morning, guys. I don't know this hopper bottom thing slowing down so much. I, I don't. I don't know. Y'all keep asking me about getting into it and doing it, and I'm like, no, no, no. And I'm just like, you know, gets much worse than this. I'm going to have to get out of it. So, uh, please don't go buy a hopper bottom. I mean, like, unless you got something really good going on with a truck, I wouldn't even go buy a truck right now. It's not the time. It's not the time. You got all these people getting into it, and, uh, you know, when it was good, all these guys were buying these cheap trucks and going Amazon Prime and, you know, probably make a little money back then on Amazon Prime. Uh, I know some guys that were doing it, especially around the holidays, that were making bank. But, uh, no, no, it's, uh, fuel keeps floating, you know, it, it keeps moving around three, anywhere from 350 to $4. I, ain't, I, ain't, I don't see it much under 3 350 and rates ain't doing nothing so uh, there's too much uh, too much market saturation with trucks to uh, to do a whole lot of negotiating with rates I mean you got to you got to be in some kind of specialty market doing something that nobody else is doing so uh, that being said I don't know I don't know this is uh, Last week, I, you know, I did a bunch of Illinois stuff and a couple rounds to Illinois and didn't really have a whole lot of trouble getting back home. But uh, here lately, uh, coming coming up north and northeast, uh, no, it ain't, ain't nothing going on there. So uh, I know some people, their dream is just own a big old truck and 
it, it's not all that great. It's more of a nightmare. So, uh, if you're making it doing what you're doing, don't buy a hopper bottom. If you're making it doing what you're doing, not trucking, don't buy a truck. It's just not good right now. So that's my spill on it, and uh, I hope somebody will listen to me. But you know, when it comes to buying a truck or getting into truck or doing a different type of trucking, you can't tell nobody shit. I know that. You just can't tell nobody because they, you know they've got this this pipe dream, and I, I, I'm I'm no different. You know, I'm just like I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna make some money, and you know. It don't ever happen. So, uh, you've got to you got to find your niche somewhere, and that's just uh, it's hard to do with so many people doing it now. So, all right, we're fixing to jump out. Check on uh, check on this front hopper. See if we're about empty, and then move up and dump the back.
Good morning. We uh, we finally got scaled in this morning. I didn't know what time this place started, but <sighs> kind of good and bad. Uh, they got started at six, so I wasn't expecting that. Everywhere I found any kind of information, it was eight. So I figured it was six because, like, uh, this company uh, at another place I go to, they get started at six. So, uh, same same company uh where i loaded ddg at a few weeks ago so anyway that corn line was long over there and kind of you scale in here you, you, in the mornings i didn't know this this guy helped me behind me thank god but uh you know one corn truck goes one uh one truck loading goes so you got two lines so i'm waiting on my guy to get out here he come out here give me my give me my walkie talkie all right so we got the walkie talkie waiting on orders from headquarters in here hopefully we'll get loaded up uh, i'm the first truck to load today so that's awesome since we've got to go uh, and do the uh do the load we're doing uh I think I mentioned that I've got to load this and deliver this today. I've got to call the place because these Tysons, man, they they get they get they get kind of they get scared, scared, uh, scared on uh, on Friday afternoons a lot of times. They'll quit dumping at like three or something like that. So. All right, so this guy told me that he was going to load me, and we'd stop. And I'd get out and check when he thought I was close, and. Uh, He basically filled the front of the trailer up. So, that being said, I am way over on my drives. Way over on my drives. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, I just, uh, it goes back to... All right, stand by. 10-4. That goes back to being, needing a gauging. All right, go ahead for first. All right, moment of truth. Did we get enough or we get too much or what'd we do? So let's pull up on here and figure it out. Eesh. And this right here, it don't have any kind of, it don't give you any kind of weight until you get on here. So. We got her, got her here finally. We uh, had to ride her hard and put her up wet, but we made it in time before they closed today. We had to get here before five thirty, and we got here right at five. So we fixed to wait on this guy to switch us over, and then we're gonna get started uh, unloading this stuff. Maybe we won't have to beat on it.
y'all, it is some kind of humid out there. It has rained over this way like a whole bunch. And we are trying to get unloaded. And I've got this shirt on that's uh, whatever it is, 65, 45 or whatever. It feels like you're wearing a, it feels like you got a, it feels like you're wearing a rain jacket. So I decided I'd jump in here while this thing's unloading because we probably got about, I don't know, 10 minutes for that batch to unload. I'm going to go ahead and try to knock this old log book out. Uh, that way we can uh, just get, go straight home. We're about, I don't know, four hours or something like that from home. So uh, I don't really want to stop. I may stop and get something to eat here in a little bit. Uh, there's a place that's got a little truck parking. And uh, it's about an hour and a half from the house. So it'd be, uh, ooh, what, three hours away? Something like that. Or, I mean, two and a half hours away. Yeah, probably two and a half hours away. So that put me, ooh, about eight o'clock there. So I might want to eat before then. So I may, I don't know. Ain't really much to eat across there. Um, stop over the TA over at Prescott. And I've got to cross over right there and ride back roads all the way home. So I don't really want to stop the TA and Petra at, at, at Prescott because it's uh, always full of that crap you that I like to make fun of. Uh, you see more stupid stuff there. And I just, I don't know. I may do that anyway. They got a Taco Bell there, a Subway, and I don't care about either one of them tonight. So, uh, one, two, three. So, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. I guess we'll figure it out later. So, all right, let me get this log book done real quick, and uh, we'll go finish up out here. <laughs> 